Hello people, today I'm going to show you how to make this sorbet tumor. I have no idea why you'd want to make this, but I have been obsessed with the color and shape of this the last week or so, so I'm going to show you. First off, I want to create some shapes. So today I'm going to make some spheres and toruses. Let me press T, change the size of that torus, make it a bit fatter, and let me rotate that torus, pressing R for rotation, hold down Shift 90 degrees, E for the Move tool, and move it across. Rotate this window. For the sphere, I'm going to change it to icosahedron, not render perfect, 32 segments, and I'm just going to place some dudes around. I'm going to hold down control to duplicate, drag it down, maybe drag another one out, change its size, make that one a little bit bigger, um, let's go another sphere, Maybe small. Put that there. Drag the torus up. Let's make another torus. There. Uh, there. Maybe there. I'm just uh, trying to fill up the scene. I'm not going to end up with exactly this, but. Filling up the scene so not, you don't start with a blank canvas is always good. So let's rotate this guy. That'll do. And maybe rotate this one there. This one I want to rotate that way and rotate that way. Press E so he's sort of intersecting. Yep, uh, that might, might do me for now. Let me just see what we get with, and I might change that later on, but let's go Alt-G to put that in a null. Uh, I'll rename that to Shapes. I will right-click, Simulation Tag, Soft Body. I will select the collision, apply to children, top level. So now everything in that group is uh, going to have this soft body applied and put a pressure of 10 so they blow up a little bit. I am going to save that. Press play and we see they inflate and fall to the ground. I do not want gravity, so control D, dynamics, zero on the gravity. While I'm here, I'll go to expert, I'm going to put collision margin at 0.5, and steps to 10. It's going to increase my dynamic calculation time, but hopefully the result will be a bit better. So in the end, so great, now they're inflating, they're not moving anywhere. I want to add a simulation, simulate dynamics force. I'm going to leave all the settings as they are. And I'll select this window so you can see it a bit better. But they're all getting dragged to one another like planets in the solar system. Each of them has their own force of gravity and depending on the size and the dynamics, they're all getting dragged closer to one another. Just pause that. And then we get this, you know, glob of shapes happening. So now that I can see what's going on, I might add a couple more shapes to it um, to 
make a bigger glob or to just to, you know, give me a different effect. So let's go back. So we're maybe add one more small sphere, maybe over there. They're all in the same axis, so I might vary some of the uh, some of them in the Y or the Z the Z axis, sorry. Just for a bit of a bit more randomness. Um, and this is just all playing around, doing whatever you want. Yeah, let's add another Taurus there. Maybe back there. Maybe think it. I'm gonna save that again because I have problems with uh, with crashing. I'm gonna put in a background at this stage. Um, I've already got a preset studio rig that I made myself. Tell me in the comments if you really want to know how I made that. Um, but I won't take you through right now. Press T to up the background. E to move that. Um, and just duplicate this camera that's here. But the camera is an octane camera. Uh, 50 focal length, everything else pretty standard. Let me just fire up Octane now. I'm going to use Path Tracing. 1000 samples. Save so I don't crash. Press F, focus on the shapes, press the shapes to focus on them. Uh, cool, I'm pretty far out. Um, let me just change the actual render to Octane Render. And let's go a bit bigger, 1200 square. Let me get this dynamics happening so I can see what my shape is looking like now. Dynamics rolling. Or not. Yeah, pretty random. Um, maybe I might want to fill up this hole in the middle there a little bit. So, but I know I can come in closer yeah let me just get this window there's my borders the red lines these lights I'm going to just drag them up a bit so they're out of frame let's go back again I'm just pressing a frame forward and then back again just so it resets the dynamics because it has some issues sometimes. Okay, let's minimize that. Let's get one more, let's say a sphere. Um, where's my front? Yeah, let's get this sphere. There's a hole sort of down here, so. Let's make it a bit smaller and see if that makes a huge difference or not. 
to our simulation. What I'm going to do to these shapes is I'm going to hold down Alt Subdivision Surface and that's going to smooth out the surface once the dynamics have run and I'm also going to select actually first let me take these timeline frames down to maybe say 40 I'm going to select uh, the cache and I'm going to say um, include collision data bake object so that's going to run through and calculate all the dynamics for those 40 frames while I watch it okay so that usually takes way longer than I want it to and my microphone died during that took about five minutes but okay so it allows me to scrub along the timeline and show me exactly oh, well those dynamics are really heavy so it allows me to scrub along the timeline and choose a point that I'm happy with and that point will be right there. Focus on that point, press focus, and let me take the camera, coordinates, and shift the position over to something like that. I will also shift the ground up to give us a bit of shadow and let's zoom in a little, little bit more let's save that okay now for the texture uh, I've got octane textures up here but you can go material, octane glossy material, um, double click, let me drag my window over there, node editor, image texture drag in, connect it to the diffuse, select a file, now I have created all these paint marble type of textures. I have another tutorial that shows you how I did that. You can find some of your own on the internet if you like. Let me drag that onto our shapes. Let me select that texture, change it to spherical mapping. Might need to re reload that in the editor. Uh, I want to drag that texture to the roughness as well. I want a displacement node. Connect that to displacement. Connect the image to the input of the displacement. So it displaces and then select a higher resolution of detail. And there we go. Now if I add a transform node, what I can do is move the texture along and get different effects. Maybe not so much. And I can do the same with the Y, transforming the Y. So obviously I just spent some time tweaking all the colors to come up with something, you know, original I'm happy with. And once I've done that, save out, clean up in Photoshop, and you are done. Mmm, art.